everybody, welcome back to another more about you here. We're in Eichenwald. This is a console game, Master 2. Where it says, uh, game is uh, Master 3 to GM4 console. Let's see. Felt like the game was a little too fast for me at times. Enemy DPS, we're a somber tracer a lot. A couple of times their DPS literally had me spinning, which makes me think I might have to change my aim technique because I'm already at a 100 sensitivity using dual zone. If I had done better, I think we could have rolled them easily, but it was my first game of the day. I feel like my brain just short-circuited. Okay. Unfortunately, I don't really have any advice for you on the controller stuff. Um, I I researched it a little bit when I tested playing a controller, but I, I don't really have any any feedback. That said, just right out of the gate, like, we got out of the spawn, like, before the rest of our team, and then we just kind of waited here, and now we're also just kind of waiting here. Okay. So you need to move, and you have to move with a purpose. So, on this map, usually, I'm going to go this way. Because you can come out of here, and you can basically just fade all the way over to this, and then I'm going to peek out a little bit, see if there's anybody there. If there's nobody on the bridge, I'm going to start rotating this way because I want to establish an angle. So we don't know they have a tracer yet. I mean, I guess we do now. It's been 16 seconds. But we don't know what what the enemy team is playing. But I'm still going to take this. If somebody's just magically like double camping you here and you get killed, oh well. Right. But this is the angle that we want to establish. All right, so let's see. That right there, that's why I don't go this way. Okay, and and the the theme here, not just this map, how you apply this everywhere, is if you're right behind your tank, right now he he walked over there. But if you're moving with the main core of your team, especially your tank, they're going to be shooting this way just by default. You're going to hit by stuff that's not aiming at you because you're just in the way. And taking this kind of damage really hurts your team because you're a support and not a tank so when he fire strikes he gets more ult charge from hitting you with it than he does from hitting anybody else well i mean any the other tank so you're already boosting his ultimate and look at everybody's ult charge already i don't even think he's swung on anybody yet that's just from fire strikes maybe he swung but Just dying to fire strikes, right? Everybody does it. But I also feel like we're not really doing anything. Okay, we don't need to be in his face. Because right now, you're... What the hell is... Okay. Your team's really spread out, which is bad. Um, because basically every hero that they have... I mean, both their DPS anyway... That's what they want. They want you to be spread out. Um, your tank, he's kind of... He wants to do the right things. And this is good. He's hes taking up the support's time. But y you, you aren't really in a position to run over this Reinhardt. Which sucks. Because this... What, he, what your tank is doing isn't inherently bad. But I'm worried how how your team's going to work around this Reinhardt. I really just have to stay away from him. That's what we have to do. Okay. I like the aggressive fade there, because I was just going to say, if he uses his charge and then my tank's over here, I'm going to aggressively fade toward you know that spot. And this is good. That was a good play. So, you have fade... The, wall, the wall's just going to sit there too long, and nobody's going to shoot it. Just get out, and if you want to go to the point, go to the point. Otherwise, start setting yourself up to go somewhere else. That was really close. Okay, now we're standing in the open. As we're healing, we need to be walking towards him and then getting out of the open area 
because so we're full health now. We take a hit from the Alari. So we just took 70 damage for no reason. Okay. And basically by luck, we didn't get hit, hit again, right? It's not even that you were really in danger of dying there. It's that you're feeding the enemy ult charge. You're feeding the enemy ult charge while not getting anything in return, right? You're not doing any damage to them. wonder what happened. He didn't finish the... That said, this was really bad play. The entire team's there. Or not the entire... Most of them are there, right? There's three people in that. So in a vacuum, yeah, shit, we, we, we trapped three people in here. That's awesome. Where the fuck is the follow-up? Not even close, right? So that's on, that's your tank's bad for fucking that up. Because we're out here in the open, which we shouldn't be, but he should have understood where the rest of his team was before doing something like this. And having both supports in there is really bad for your tank. Because this Reinhardt is going to shred this dude. I mean, obviously he did. But, like, the, he's he was never going to win this. Because if he starts damaging the Reinhardt, all the Reinhardt has to do is just start shielding. So if he uses his cardiac overdrive, he doesn't get any healing from it. And then he just sits there and shields it while the two supports beat the fuck out of him. So, anyway, I won't focus on that much. Uh, so what we need to be doing now, we lost our tank, is now we need to be seeding space. We need to give space away here. Okay. We need to establish ourselves. What, you know, like, what is this? You're going to do nothing. Absolutely nothing, right? We did Moyer's damage beam does like, I, I can't remember, it's like 55 or 60 damage per second or something. It's nothing, right? It's going to take you seven years to break his shield. And May also doesn't do very much damage to shields. She can icicle it, but it's slow as shit, right? 75 damage. So we needed to be using this time to establish a new, a, a new, a new spot. And see, the Ryan had the right idea because he's like, okay, we just killed their tank. He's been dead for a little while, like long enough that he's he's about to respawn. If I can stagger these people, it's just going to be a shit show for the rest of the the rest of this timer. So, I why rewound there cuz I wanted to see if this was reactionary. It was not. She walled them. She walled them because she was going to wall them. It's just really bad timing for him. So, and we didn't react to it. I don't know if it's because of the wall, but I'm thinking it's probably not. And we, it's basically luck that we didn't get shattered there. I'm good with that, right? I, I'm good with that because. Your May fucked up here. You're May fucked up because she went into ice block. Because if you hadn't ulted here, she would have just staggered herself, right? Because your tank's not back yet. He's still walking over here. So she made do because you kept the healing up on her and she uses her ultimate. But that was, that was a really shitty play on the May's part. A lot of mistakes. But then what I want to say is, you know the enemy team has a Sombra. You have to know where she is. Now, that said, it's not always inherently bad if Sombra, Sombra hacks you out of your ult. Especially if you've already done what you needed to do with it. Okay? So you were using the ult to keep the May alive. Right? And keep a lot of pressure on the enemy team. Okay, cool. So she gets her ult out. And then the Sombra hacks you. No big deal. Because now she just gave herself away. So, it's not... It, again, and the stuff that I'm telling you, I'm not going to tell the, like metal rank players because I don't want them to worry about that shit yet. I want them to worry about understanding where Sombra is all the time so that they can 
consistently so that they could consistently you know not get hacked out of their shit so i rewound here because oh, fuck this is not a heal sombra moment this is a damage tracer moment the higher you go in rank the more that that shift is going to happen okay this tracer can track the sombra they just can right you don't do enough healing to outheal her damage. Just Reaper. At almost every, especially every DPS in the game, you cannot outheal their damage. The only way, if I want to, if I'm going to heal, it's most often because they either already have full health or it's close, and I'm going to get a little bit of a heal over time on them before I switch to damage. And that that player's looking at who's shooting at him, right? She's shooting at the Sombra, but she really shouldn't really shouldn't be. She needs to be worried about the person that's right in front of her face. Um, so anyway, for you, I want your default to be, if, you, if there's two people dueling, your default is to damage the enemy instead of, de instead of healing your team. good yeah, sure, sure a lot of people jumping and then everybody runs back to the fucking cart i would never argue that like there's a difference between like pc and console or whatever everybody's just like you could tell me this was a gold game and i would believe you everybody's standing out in the cart everybody's fucking jumping your tank just runs into the fucking middle of them and keeps getting hacked like he keeps doing it over and over again Okay, this, what I'm seeing here is just, this is what I would call the gold clusterfuck. So I, I don't know what this is, right? But none of this is high ranked play. None of it. So, for one, there's too many of you on the cart. Two, you guys won the fight and then everybody ran back to the cart. You just gave away all that space for free, okay? When I said you got to give space... That when your tank first died and you got to back up, that's because you don't control that space anymore. You can't keep that space. Okay? So you need to think about going somewhere else. But... But this is... This is not what I was expecting. That was, that was a good ult, though. Ah, uh, we got greedy. It was a good ult. But here, we can't fade into the enemy like that. We can't fade into three of them. Now, you, it's okay to do it. Like, if you guys were really close to capping and you're just, you're just kind of pulling them with you so you guys can cap, fine. But that wasn't the case. We weren't close enough. And that's... That feedback is kind of nitpicky, but one of the, the kind of the most common thing that I talk about with master players is timing. And I just covered this with the, I think I talked about this in the diamond review I just did or in the last couple of days. Um, that some of the things that master players struggle with in general is just, they know what to do, but they don't always know when to do it. Uh, and that was kind of a case of that. Good. Okay. I'm glad your tank got his shit together. So, like, right now, cool. But as your team kind of moves up and people get off the cart, <coughs> you need to start setting up your setting up your angle that you want to use. So we can hear. Yeah, we can hear the tracer behind us. Good. Yeah, when they have two like dive DPS like that, um, you're gonna want to put a lot of kind of effort into 
into forcing them out because there's not really anything for you else do you do anything else for you to do against this team anyway you want to stay away from the reinhardt right so you don't really want to be frontlining okay you want to you're, you're not going to be able to pick on the enemy supports especially on this map um and it's mostly because it's kiriko and a, a decent kiriko can just force you out okay so if you go to start picking on the ana and they have a kiriko and she's close by it, you're going to struggle with that. And she should be close by because the two DPS should be diving, right? She's, she should be kind of splitting the distance between Ana and her front line. So there's not... If she's doing what she's supposed to do, you're going to have you're gonna have a hard time against this um, in terms of, like, flanking and picking on their supports. So I would be looking to get the Tracer and, and Sombra contained basically right because may is decent against those two but if they're especially if they're like kind of diving together uh it, it's really hard there's it, it's gonna you guys are really gonna struggle against that um so the we really have to tighten up our positioning you should never be here because all it takes, and we don't know what they have yet. The the um, scoreboard hasn't populated yet. A widow could literally just get up here and pop you one. It would be dumb of that to play that into your comp. But whatever, right? So, like, if you're going to hold here, you're going to hold here. Okay? You need to you need to have cover immediately available. Okay. When we're here, we don't have cover immediately available. See how much farther you have to go, like just to get away. Okay. So that said, I would be splitting the distance between them and him. And what I really want to do is I want to shoot damage orbs this way and either take their attention or force them back or something that takes the pressure off of him. And then maybe he can kill the Sombra or whatever. Um, you know, and it allows your DPS to shoot into their backs, right? So this, I'm good with this angle, like that your tank's taking, but we need to support this angle. We're not supporting it right now. Right, so we just backed up here. Why did we back up? The enemy's not pushing towards us. We know where our tank is. We know the enemy's looking at our tank because why wouldn't they, right? You don't, you don't even have to actually no because they're not going to just ignore him so us backing up here you may as well be in spawn right now right and i i don't want that to feel like harsh but i want you to think about it from that perspective because when it comes down to it that's that's what it takes okay and here's where are we at 18 minutes here's why you're struggling Okay. And you feel like this was too fast. And for one, I totally understand that. Um, the first time I played in an all type five, top 500 game, which was weird because I, I was the only player not in the top 500. Um, I just, I, it was like, I felt like I was playing a completely different game because everything happened so fast. Now you'll get used to that. But like when you're first, when it's kind of uncharted territory, it's a lot. It can be very overwhelming. So, one of the reasons you've, you're probably having a hard time kind of keeping up with what's going on is because since you're not providing any value to your team, it's like a 5v4, but it's a 5v4 where all five of the enemy team are playmakers, right? So, this, it's not, it's not throwing, right? To me, throwing is something you do on purpose, uh, but we are starving our team of value right now. Because right now, we're not doing anything. We're just looking around. Right? I, I know you're worried about the Sombra. But one, I can hear her. Right? So you, we need to use our sound cues. And two, one of the best ways to deal with the Sombra is cover. If you're, if you're close enough to cover, say you're right here, right? And none of those enemies are here. But we're holding this corner. None of the enemies are here. 
Okay. And the Sombra is, comes out of this way and tries to hack you or virus you, you just, literally just walk around the corner. Okay. Because even if she hits you with the virus, when you go around the corner, it's going to waste time, right? That's what we want to do. We want to waste time until we get our cooldowns back. So we either have our fade or we're waiting for it, and we have our orb or we're waiting for it. Okay. And you can stall that amount of time. And also in that time, since so it's going to take her longer to kill you, that's more time that she's out in the open, and it's more time for your team to react. So if you use cover like that all the time, it's easier to get away from that stuff. I'm fine with shooting an orb that direction, but we peeked out once and then peeked out and shot the orb. I don't like that. If you don't need to see these players, you should not see them. Okay? Because that, again, you're giving them opportunity to do damage with you, to you while you're not giving getting anything in return. Okay, So with our team like this, I actually use the same angle on defense. I like to cover this angle, one, because people like to go this way so they can create their own angle. So I make them come and force me out of it. Okay? But also, if you're right here, you can shoot damage orbs in to the core of their team without being seen because they're not going to just inherently be looking this way when you peek out and shoot the orb okay yeah they're going to see you but then you just peek back in and then if they if they challenge you in here okay cool well then we just back up and then our team collapses on them from here this this kind of shit you know is all over every map right so it, it, you don't have to necessarily just memorize the maps you just have to look for what makes a good angle. Okay. Because you're either denying the enemy that angle, or you're creating that angle for yourself. So, you were basically using that ult to heal, but what you inadvertently did was you shifted the tempo of the fight in your favor. Um, so, that was accidentally good. Because I don't think, the reason why I rewound it a couple of times is I don't think you were doing it for that reason. I think you were doing it because you, you felt like you were getting overwhelmed and, and needed to heal more. Um, that's my guess, anyway. Because you cast it on an, on an ally and an ally that needed healing. Okay, so that's my... That's my guess. Okay. But what ended up happening is when you cast it, everybody, you know, people started pressing Q, right? So, but you initiated that. So you started the cascade. Okay. Which is good, right? That's one of... Our, that's a really good use of my result. Okay. Force out... Try to force out enemy ultimates before they're ready to use them. Okay. Now, does that mean you're going to win every fight? No, right? Because the enemy team's doing the same thing. Okay. But a as you rank up, you're going to find that... Um, you're going to find that it's more common to use your ultimate for stuff like that. Because uh, you're not really going to use it to heal. You use it to line people up and stuff like that. And make You're going to use it more abstractly. Okay, You're going to either use it to force out ults or you're going to use it to make space. And you were... You didn't initially cast it for either of those. Mostly just kind of unlucky timing. Um, if I'm if I'm coming back here to contest, though, I'm not going to walk through this door. You know why? Because they think I'm going to walk through that door. So I like going up the tunnel and, and coming out there. Uh, and then if I don't have time to do that, I just get out. Oh, she actually landed that virus. That was cool. So how many enemies can we see that we can do anything to? 
None. Okay. Because you're strafing back and forth and being able to see these players. So they can just get free damage on you if they wanted to, right? Now their attention is focused elsewhere. But it, that's not always going to be the case. So you need to build the habits. Nope. No, 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 no. No, no. <laughs> no. No, this was... Uh, yeah, we fucked up. We fucked up. Basically... Okay, she fucked up her timing. Like, I wouldn't have retreated yet. When I see that, I'm out. Okay, so I, I wouldn't have retreated as soon as the, the Gravitic Flux, or whatever it's called, went up. Because, yeah, your Kiriko might have Suzu and might be able to time it and everybody lives and all that shit. Well, that's not what happened. Okay. And there was a big enough gap between when this happened and when we cast our coalescence for us to understand we needed to get out. Um, you need to just let him die. All right. It was multiple seconds. Okay. So instead of staying here, Basically, as soon as they landed, I'm going to start making my way out, right? Because while they're cleaning up this kill, so their their attention's going to be on them, not on me, or on him, I mean. So I have the opportunity to try and get out, and I'd probably go that way or something like that. I don't want to run straight in here. Um, maybe I would. It, it just depends, right? We won't know because we don't know what the players did uh, because you tried to save your tank. Right? So we wasted our ultimate, and we're potentially staggering ourselves. Okay. So, like, getting hacked there, who gives a shit, right? Doesn't matter. So, we ended up getting an ultimate out of it. Okay. That's reasonable, but we still staggered the shit out of ourselves. Okay. And Kitsune Rush is a powerful ultimate. Um, but that was... Our decision to ult there was was a mistake. Okay. Because even though we ended up actually saving our tank, which I'm surprised happened, we were still we were still away from other players on our team. You gotta stop jumping too. Everybody's in here is doing it. That blows me away blows me away. Good. Punish the Sombra. Yeah. Okay, we hear we hear the tracer behind you. So you're you're on tracer duty. You never want these duels to happen. Your your objective for these kinds of team fights is to never make it so one of your teammates is one v one ing one of the enemy teammates, right? You're putting too much faith into something that just doesn't, there's no rhyme or reason to it, right? If one of these players was significantly better than the other, one of these players wouldn't be in this rank, okay? So I, I don't like those odds. I don't like 50-50, right? I wanna, I wanna give us the 67-33, the And force force these duels uh, in your favor. Okay, so that was kind of an oversight by us. If you're not playing with headphones, I highly recommend it. If you are playing with headphones, you should play a few games where you just like focus on sounds, right? So you get get into a couple of matches where you know don't make it look like you're throwing or something. Like you know shoot some healing orbs every now and then. But your goal is to understand where everybody is, your team and the enemy team, right? Just based on their footsteps, kind of know what's going going on around you. Okay. Look where we're standing. Like, you, you can't be more in the open than this. So, you can fade jump off of this up there. I think I fuck it up probably 9 out of 10 times, but you can. Um, but, if I'm... If the team fight's happening here, 
really, I'm, I'm going to try my damnedest to get up here. Um, but the next be best place is just over here, right? Because right now, you're taking damage from the tracer and over here, right? Because that, um, because Sigma is shooting your direction. That's what this is, right? So you're taking fire from two different angles, which is what I try to teach people to do, right? So this is an example of it working against you because right now, the where you're positioned, you either have to look this way or you have to look this way. You can't look at both. So in addition to you doing that to enemy players, you need to prevent them from doing it to you, right? Because as I said earlier, everything that you're doing, the enemy team is trying to do as well, right? And these people are good at it, right? You know, we're in a high enough rank where the people, for the most part, they know the game pretty well. They're not great, right? Or whatever, you know? Not not friggin' child prodigies and shit, but these are competitive people. I guess we, uh... Again, I forgot to look. Let's see if this is a win or loss. Um, really, it doesn't matter. It's more my curiosity. So again, we're standing out in the open. And what really chaps my ass about this match is... You said this is a master something to GM something game. Uh, you said your tank is also the rank one DPS. Now, why the fuck is nobody on the high ground? Like... With what they have right now, this is a fucking free win. This is this is free money up here. Because you can rotate this way and heal somebody, right? You can beam anybody that's down here. So if the tracer's dicking around with your teammates, okay? You can be over here, pick on anybody that wants to get around here, and then you can go on here and shoot fucking orbs at these people. None of them can get to you, okay? Easily, right? Because the Kiriko can climb up here. I'll duel a Kiriko. It's risky because better Kirikos are going to be better at hitting headshots. But you can put yourself in an advantageous position because if she climbs this wall and you get back in here and you shoot an orb at the floor or something like that, you know, it, it's risky, but I would 100% I would risk that. Okay. And then if there's Sombra, if she's not on the high ground already, she has to translocate to get to you, which means now she doesn't have it. So she's basically a non-issue. Really, the, the Kiriko is the only player on their team that I'd worry about right now if I was on the high ground. But now, look who you have to worry about. Fucking everyone. Okay. This is... This is... This is hurting you in your games. I'm sure of it. But what's most surprising is not that we have things to fix with our positioning. It's that, that absolutely nobody in this match is, is even attempting to gain an advantage through the high ground. Okay. So that was... Uh, so I'm glad your Symmetra went up there. I like that. I just spent this whole time ranting about how nobody's on the high ground and then, then she creates a teleporter. You could have teleported when you came out of Fade and ended up up there. And that's what I would have done. Because it wouldn't have been as obvious to anybody. And you may or may not have gotten virus there. It really doesn't matter. but um, Because then you're up there. Because now, look where we are. We don't have our Fade and we're standing out in the open. Kiriko's getting greedy. So if we were, if we weren't, like if we're on the high ground right now, like the reason why it feels like we're just fucking spinning around in circles is because we're standing in the open and they're punishing you for it. Yeah, that was. What the fuck your tank's doing? Anyway, so it looks like they cap and then, uh, I guess you guys must win this then. Okay. Well, that's good. But it was close. Oh, yeah, yeah. You win, but you said you were worried. Um, it could have been more of a stomp if, if, if you would have done more. 
I remember that now. Okay. When stuff like this happens and you don't have a way out, go die as soon as possible. Because all you do when you do this shit is make it take longer for you to get back to the fight. Just go die. They're going to kill you anyway. Do it on your terms, right? Everything about these games is you setting yourself up to do these things at your timing and what you want them to happen. Okay, so I want to respawn at this time and respawn with my team. So I'm going to go just jump on the payload. Of course, they're going to shoot me. Okay. I'm going to use my ult now and force out other ults. So now I'm using it on my time. Okay. So that that's a, that's a topic we're going to have to, that you need to focus on, right? I'm going to do damage to you, but I'm going to do it in, on, on my, you know, at my discretion so that I can set myself up to do damage to you, but not take any, right? Everything that you're trying to, trying to do in these matches is to make it so stuff is happening on your time schedule, okay? And you, you can influence that, especially as Moira, right? You have an ultimate that, that can really manage the tempo of the fight, okay? You have Fade. Okay, you have orbs that can go around corners, right? So you can do damage to the enemy without them doing damage to you, right? Like one of the things that's good about Moira, right, is that she has a lot of tools, and her 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 hero design is such a way that you can you can influence a lot of different things about each fight, right? And of course, most heroes, you know, that's what their their kits are. But you can do it without dying, right? And that's kind of the that's the the thing that makes Moira what she is. Now, right now, I would say she's pretty weak in the higher ranks, um, but that's more of a balancing issue, not really a design issue, or at least I think so. Okay, uh, big picture, yeah, positioning, positioning. I don't think I've said this in a while uh, in a review, but I, I always want you to take the high ground because you can always drop back down, right? Because there's instances where you don't want to be in the high ground, right? You know, like there's five enemies up there or something. You know what I'm saying? Like there's just because there's high ground doesn't mean you need to be on it because if you can't do what you need to do from that high ground, well, then you're not gaining any value either, okay? But... I want us to look more about high ground, okay? We need to stay closer to cover so that we don't get hacked, um, so we don't take as much damage when we're dishing out damage, things like that. And then we need to work on taking the angles to both give us an advantage when attacking the enemy and also forcing the enemy, making the enemy force me out, right? Because they want to take an angle and I don't want to give it to them. Okay, so uh, still quite a bit of positioning work we can do, I'd say. Uh, that will also help with you kind of feeling lost, I think. Um, but big pictures, we got we can't stand out in the open like this. Like this, we can't do this. Okay. So uh, let's keep working on that. And then try and practice a while using your ultimate for timing, right? So I'm going to use my ultimate because I want to, I'm going to use my Oh, first in this team fight and see what I can get out of it, right? Or I want to push the enemy back, okay? Stuff like that. You, the more abstract ways to use your ultimate. So, all right, we're almost at 40 minutes. Shit, I don't think I've done one that long in a while. But, um, so that'll do it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions and good luck.